Hey, what's going on? Ryan here with Intersection Records. Talking about uh, a, a kind of a new series uh, that I'm going to start. Talking about albums that are a little bit marginalized by even, you know, a band's fans. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, bands have their classic albums. This is one, this is series is going to focus on lost albums from that band's discography that maybe are great albums that aren't given as much attention. We're going to shed some light. In this first series, we're going to talk about the Almond Brothers and their album Shades of Two Worlds, which came out in August of 91. So the Almond Brothers, of course, were founded by Dwayne Almond. And Greg Allman and, and Dickie Betts, Jamoy, Butch Trucks, and Barry Oakley in 1969. They put out a couple of great studio albums. Uh, the debut, uh, self-titled, The Idol Wind South. Of course, then they do Live at the Fillmore East in 1970. And unfortunately, in October of 71, founding guitar player and really leader of the band, uh, Dwayne Allman is, is killed in a motorcycle accident. They put out Eat a Peach. Dwayne's on part of that album. After finishing uh, Brothers and Sisters in 1973. It's released in 73, but Barry Oakley has then died in, in, in late October, November of 72. And now you're down to band members. You know, the band struggles throughout the rest of the 70s. They have a breakup in like 76, 77. They get back together for a pretty damn good album, uh, Enlightened Rogues, in 1979. But really, by 1980 and 1981 and 82, of those records whew, are some of the worst records of their career. They break up in 82. In 1989, they put out a box set called Dreams. They go on a brief tour. The tour does so well. And they come back with a comeback album called Seven Turns in 1989. This is a great record. This gets nominated for a, a Grammy. Uh, True Gravity was the instrumental that got nominated. Um, you know, what they did when they got back together in 89 is they finally found a proper replacement for legendary guitar player Dwayne Allman when they found Warren Haynes. Warren Haynes had come from the David Allen Coe band. He was born in 1960. So he's a 29 year old man at this point, ready to burst onto the scene. He had done some co-writes with uh, Garth Brooks um, prior to this. And he's a, a writer and he was in Dickie Betts' solo band. And you know, finally as the jam band scene and the country rock thing kind of came back in 89, they were primed to come out with that Seven Turns record. The second record in the three disc run was Shades of Two World Worlds. In 1994, that would be followed up by an awesome record also, Back Where It All Begins. But we're gonna focus on this record today. Uh, Richard, one of my subscribers and a, a, a loyal supporter, he recommend, he asked me if I would look at this album and a couple other albums. We're going to do that. And it has spurned me on to thinking about, again, taking records that maybe we, we could shed some more light on something like this. You can see the boys up there. You know, uh, Warren Haynes, of course, becomes somebody that you could put up with Dickie Betts and they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other, guitar-wise. Let's not forget about bass player Alan Woody that was also added in 89. Alan Woody would go on to form Government Mule with Warren Haynes, but he plays on these three records. And boy, he's comparable, again, to some of the, in my opinion, some of the best baseball players that have ever played rock and roll. This record comes out again in August of 91. It's their 10th record. Opens up with a fantastic Greg Allman, Alan Woody, Warren Haynes song called End of the Line. This was the single that was released that fall. It was a hit. And it really became a live staple for the band the rest of their career. 
Bad Rain's the next song, uh, a song written by Betts and Haynes. And you're going to see a, 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 a you know, uh, where they wrote a lot of this record together. Bad Rain, you know, it, it, it's... It's a blues song, but it's kind of based in a, in a in a major key, and it doesn't take you down some of the cliche roads that some of um, some of the blues songs did at that time. It's a, it's an upbeat song, um, you know. The, the, again, this is produced by Tom Dowd, who had done their legendary records. It's a great sounding record. The, the real drop-dead five-star classic on this record is the third song, Nobody Knows, which is written by Dickie Betts exclusively. It's one of the best songs in their catalog. It's certainly their best song, in my opinion, of the later day lineup. And it holds up there. It's an 11 or 12-minute epic. The interplay between Betts and Haynes is just back and forth. I saw this band for the first time coincidentally the same month that this album came out at the muni uh amphitheater that's an outdoor it was the last to my knowledge the last show ever at the muni before now it's a strictly plays it's one of the it's the oldest amphitheater west of the mississippi real quick story we, we we were 18 i was about to go to old miss it was the last night of summer if you will we got a bottle of jack daniels uh one of my buddies dave drank most of that bottle and lost the contact lens in the car. Uh, he finished off the bottle and as we walked in, he lost the other contact lens and he was blind. Little feet opened up and Almond Brothers and he was not only blind drunk, but he was actually blind as well. He'd been wearing glasses since he was eight. Anyway, side story, he had a bad night. I had a great night and found a band that I would love for the rest of my life. Uh, Desert Blues is next again. You know, Dickie's taking that kind of uptown blues thing and doing it well. Um, we slow down a little bit more of a country blues for Get On With My Life, which is a Greg Allman written song. Allman's not writing as much here as Haynes and Dickie are. Uh, Get On With... Uh, with Your Life is a cool song. That was also a staple in their live show. A little bit more slower, allowing for some of the intricacies of Warren Haynes, especially solos. Another uh, Betts Haynes pen song, Midnight Man, sung by Greg. Maybe the weakest song in this record. You know, kind of going back to the Allman Brothers paint by numbers and, and doing some of the things that you're expecting on a song. That song could be left off on this 52-minute album. If you watch my shows, you know that I like about a 45 minute album. By the way, I've ranked the catalog of this band. I'm gonna put a link to my ranking of the Almond Brothers catalog in the description here. You know, the next song is an almost perfect eight and a half minute epic instrumental called Kind of Bird. Now, Dickie is famous for his instrumental epics. On Idle in South, we have Memory Elizabeth Reed and Brothers and Sisters, we have Jessica. On Enlightened Rogues, we have Pegasus. Um, you know, this is you know, kind of bird. Why are we calling it kind of bird? Well, I, th I think it's a tribute to, to, to jazz. It's a tribute to Bird, who is Charlie Parker. And a kind of bird is a tribute to a kind of blue, you know, Miles Davis who uh, did his 1959 album, along with Cannibal Adderley and John Coltrane on saxophones, respectively. You know, one of the great things about Dickie is he's able to use his jazz influence to, to weave a very unique sound in his guitar playing. Um, it's hard to, to, to under uh, talk about how good of a song Kind of Bird is. Again, it was nominated for a Grammy for whatever that means. We've talked about what I think about the Grammys, but it's an indicator that you've been noticed by the industry again. Uh, and then the Robert Johnson uh, penned uh, Come On In My Kitchen. That was part of their acoustic set at that time in their career. They were doing little mini sets within uh, a show and doing some slide acoustic work. It's a It's a cool song. Again, end of the line, nobody knows. Nobody knows is just an epic that's really kind of up on par. 
We like the whipping posts of the world. It becomes a staple. Well, the cool thing about these three records is that Warren Haynes and Alan Woody, along with Dickie Betts, Greg Allman, John Moy, and Butch Trucks, are able to have a second run and three really quality albums. You know, it's you had those dozen or 15 classic period Allman Brothers songs that were live staples. Well, you added another 10 songs between those three albums that could stand up with some of those classics. And Warren Haynes uh, and the boys, you know, have to really feel great about the fact that not only did they come back for the nostalgia run, but they had material that was worthy of some of that, of some of that old things. I wanted to thank Rich for uh, suggesting that I look at this album again. We're going to uh, look at um, In Through the Outdoor in the next few days as well, again, by Rich's recommendation. Subscribe to my channel, okay? I do shows every day. I appreciate you out there. Um, you know, this has been a learning experience for me too, going down some of these roads, revisiting some of this stuff. Peace out. We'll see you later. Go Chiefs uh, on opening NFL night. See ya.